Welcome back to the channel guys and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make a super realistic looking tennis ball in Blender step by step. You can see here this is the actual result and it might look like a complicated thing to make but it's actually very simple. We're just going to be using a UV sphere. Now I want to give full credit to my lecturer from years ago when I was doing my diploma on screen and multimedia who taught me this in a basic modeling um, techniques kind of session that we had. And it was kind of where I learned it when I was learning Maya at the time. So yeah, thanks to Darren. That's who I'm giving credit to for this technique. So let's jump into it. And I hope you guys enjoy learning how to make a realistic tennis ball in Blender. So you're gonna jump in to Blender and let's just select all the default objects and press delete. We're gonna go shift A and under the mesh options, let's add in a UV sphere. And then we're gonna just tab into edit mode Inside of edit mode, let's go into our front orthographic view by pressing one on a number pad. So in the front orthographic view, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our edge select mode and let's just go into wireframe for now. Deselect everything. And you're gonna go shift, alt and left click on the middle edge. It should um, select the whole thing going around. So shift and alt. And then you're gonna go in to the back here. We can just press control one or command one to go into the back orthographic view. And then holding in shift and alt again, you're going to left click on the edge running along the back in the middle. So what we have here are both of these edges over here running like this, as you can see. With that done, you're going to press V on your keyboard. So V and that's going to cut it when you press the V. So if you actually go G and you move that edge, you can see it's been separated, but just right click to let go. And then what you're going to do, you're going to go back into your front of graphic. Just select any little bit of topology on here and then go Control L or Command L and that'll select the whole half. In your front orthographic view, you should be able to go R, X and then 90. So R followed by X and 90 and then press Enter. So that's going to rotate it 90 degrees. Now you can see this is what we have. We're going to press A to select everything. And now we're going to fuse it together by pressing F3 with everything selected. And we're going to type in merge. And we're going to go merge by distance. And now we have fixed this. So we should be able to test this by just going over here and selecting an edge and then going control plus and growing the selection. If you can see the selection growing all the way through, then you know they are fused together. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna to go to our front again and we're gonna start here in this middle edge and we're gonna move up one, two, three, and four edges. So the fourth edge up here, you're gonna hold in shift and alt again and then left click on this edge. And you're gonna see it's gonna loop select it all the way around like so. Then you're gonna go control B or command B to create a bevel. And you can make it about this much. And then you're gonna go E to extrude right click and then go alt s and scale it in a little bit like so then you're going to deselect and you can go shift alt and left click on this edge and this edge and also the inside edges here so they're all selected and then you're going to go control b or command b on a mac and just create a slight little chamfer on all of those tab back out right click go shade smooth then go to your modifiers and give it a subdivision surface modifier. But what we want to do is we want to come here in to the middle, hovering over one of these edges, go control R. You're going to see it forms a loop and you're just going to left click twice. And with that still active, you're going to go alt S and just scale out a little bit to give it a slight bulge. And just one more little detail is you can go control R over here, left click once and then slide up an edge. Control R over here, left click and slide down one edge. This is just optional, but it's just gonna tighten up the edges here a little bit after we've added the subdivision surface modifier. But what we're gonna do then is you're just gonna go Shift Alt, left click to select this middle edge, then go Control Plus just two times to select this inward part. Go to your vertex select option, so it's the vertex vertices that are selected. Then you're gonna go Control I or Command I to inverse the selection. Then you go over to your object data properties. You're gonna create a new group, double click and call it fuzz. And then go ahead and assign. So now if you deselect and you click on here and you go select, you should see that only these areas are selected. 
that's where we're going to add the fuzzy stuff. So let's tab back out. Let's now go over to our particles. Let's click plus to create a new particle system and let's make it hair. Let's bring down the hair length and we're gonna make it quite short. So let's go with something like, I don't know, maybe 0 0.04 or 0.05. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our viewport display. Let's make the strand steps four. Let's go over to the children's. Let's make it interpolated. Let's go to the display amount for the viewport, make it 30. And for the render amount, we're gonna make it 150. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the roughness. And when we're gonna come here to the endpoint value and we're gonna add some value to that to make these all a bit more random. And then we're gonna to come to the ununiform and give that a bit of a value to make this look a little bit more fuzzy. Let's go up to our render. Let's enable B spline under the path and bump this up to five. Let's go back down to the children. I'm just gonna bring the endpoint maybe just a little bit down and also bring the ununiform down just a little bit. That's just, we just want a slight bit of fuzz here. We don't wanna to go too crazy. But to make it only appear where the fuzz is, let's go all the way down to the bottom to the vertex groups. Under the density option, let's click here and select fuzz. Now we only have to fuzz where it's supposed to be. Now we have that done. Let's go to our render settings. Let's change the render engine to cycles. The device, we're gonna make that GPU. You only have to do that bit if you have a GPU. If not, just keep it at CPU. You're gonna go down to the render and under the max samples, let's make that 60. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in an area light and we're gonna move it up. Let's go over to our light settings. Let's go give that a strength of 400 and then S to scale it up. In our front view, we're gonna add in a camera and let's just move that back in the scene and then you can move your camera to wherever you prefer. And then you're gonna go over to your render settings again. Let's just go all the way down to film. Let's enable transparent for transparent background. And now we're gonna press Z and we're gonna go rendered. And we should see our tennis ball, but let's actually select a light. Let's duplicate it and create a light coming from the back. Duplicate it again, have it coming from the back, but pointing up a little bit. And then you can duplicate that same light and have it coming from the side. Just so we have a little bit of lighting on our tennis ball, you can add as many lights as you wish. It's completely up to you. But the idea here is to have it lit and then we're gonna select the tennis ball again. We're gonna go over to our materials. We're gonna create a new material, call it fuzz. We're gonna to come to the base color and we're gonna make it like a tennis ball kind of greenish yellow. Make it nice and saturated, but not too saturated. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab into edit mode and we should still have all of this fuzz here selected. If not, just select it. Then go control I to inverse the selection. Go back to your materials, click plus, assign a new material and go new. Let's call this rubber. And we're just gonna leave it as white. Let's tab back out. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we should be able to see this is what we have. Now just select the tennis ball and go over to your particles, scroll all the way down to where it says hair shape, and then come to the diameter of the root and make it point three. That's just gonna make this hair a little bit finer. Make sure to save, and then you're gonna go render and render image. And here we have one realistic tennis ball. You can see it actually looks very realistic. And this was a very simple tutorial to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll try and upload the final result here if anybody's interested to my Patreon. You can check that out in the description below. But this has been a quick Blender tutorial on making a tennis ball in Blender with simple modeling techniques. I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.